Hi quilters, I'm Joyce Grandy with Material Girls of Florida and I haven't done a video in a while. I don't know why I've been around. I've just been doing silly things. Um, but today I'm going to do a video on lighting. We are packing up to go up north for six weeks to see our, our youngest daughter, Robin. And I have to bring handwork because we're flying. Uh, I can't bring my sewing room with me on the airplane. They, they think they have rules about that or something. I don't know. Uh, so I'm getting together handwork to bring there. One of the problems in doing handwork, first of all, I'm not a big fan of handwork. I only do handwork when I travel. When we traveled and did shows, I always had a project going. Um, but the only reason I'm doing handwork is I don't have my machine. So one of the problems with handwork uh, is the lighting, for me anyway, with my old eyes, it's the lighting. And particularly when I'm away from home, because at home I have all my special lights I can, you know, spotlight, but away it's a problem in my daughter's house. I'm always trying to uh, move stuff around to, to get a good view. So I have some lighting choices here. I'm going to show you what I've come up with some hits and miss. The first one is this, let's see, what's it called? It is called the Flexible Book Light. Flexible Book Light. And it's a bendy wire. It goes around your neck and you can bend it, hold the spot pretty well, any way you want. And when you turn it on, it's rechargeable by the way, so that's pretty cool. And when you turn it on, it has three different, um, lights it really goes pretty bright there's the third one so if i'm doing handwork once you get it in the right spot i will say that is the tricky part but once you get it in the right spot let me put the camera down a little bit okay once i have it in the right spot it's pretty good light i mean it's really good light um if you move it kind of move <laughs> moves with you so it takes a little getting used to but it is, uh, it works well, so I'm, I'm not unhappy with it. That's the most recent one I, I've tried. For several years, I've used um, the Beam and Read. Now this is one that's available through the quilt distributors. Um, and this is the three light Beam and Read. And here's what that box looks like. I don't even know why I still have the box. Beam and Read. And this is a three light one. And it comes with um, lens covers. I have them somewhere. I've never used them. I don't know why you use them. But uh, this works the best for me. And I like it because, look, it doesn't wiggle around. If I move, the light moves. But it's not, it won't move just from flopping around. And I like that a lot. And the light's really good. Um, and the five light one, I thought the five light one was too bright and I'd go blind, but maybe not. This one uses batteries. It takes a long time to use the batteries, but, um, the new ones that just came out, I just saw this at my distributor are rechargeable. So you might want to look into that too. I'll put links to these down in the, um, description. I'll put links to the Amazon one anyway. And then this, I'll show you this little guy. This little guy, I'll put him on, is a clip-on. There we go. Let's see. Oops. Not bad. If I put him on my shirt and kind of get him to, in, a, in a darkened room. This room is really bright, but in a darkened room, I think it would be fine. This was from the Dollar Tree. It's a dollar. And it came with the battery. So, I mean, it's pretty much a throwaway. Not bad. The Dollar Tree also has this one, and this one they call uh, the, the the book thing. It's a book reader, something like that. Not a bad light. A little hard. I don't think I could use this except what it's meant for, which is a book, because it's too floppy. And the light's not quite as good. I, I wouldn't even try using this except maybe to read at night when it's dark. Uh, the other Dollar Tree one that I really like, this is not for hand work, it's for my, I put them on my sewing machine. It's a push light and it's a battery operated. It's pretty bright when it's on the sewing machine bed because the sewing machine bed's white, don't forget, so that's really bright. And on the back, you can either hang it on a hook or it has a peel and stick that you can uh, put it underneath 
the harp on your machine and it, it really lights up the area. I just got a new one because I, I took the old one off when I took my Juki in to be um, serviced. I didn't think the guy would like that. So that's Dollar Tree. Um, speaking of Dollar Tree, um, a couple of other things I always buy there. One is this, they call it their chopping mat. It's really thin plastic, but I use it for templates when I'm appliqueing. And there's two in here for a dollar. And I just bought my second package after I, probably two or three years. So they really last a long time. And then um, recently I got these guys. They came three to a package. There we go. Three to, ooh, hang on. This isn't easy. You guys should try doing this camera stuff sometime. It's really just a, a trip. So these came three to a package and, and they're great. Particularly now that I'm traveling, I have one that's full of pins and one that has needle threaders and needles that I'll use in it. Um, so they're super. Three for a dollar. Can't beat that. And so the last thing I'm going to show you is some of the projects I'm taking with me on the road. I'm packing up a box and I'm mailing it to Connecticut because we're going for six weeks and the suitcases will be pretty darn full. So I have to mail this up. So uh, I struggle with handwork. It's not my favorite. So uh, it's a struggle. The first one I'm taking, this is a wool applique. I've already put the wool on the cotton background, but now all these hexes get embroidered. So you can kind of see that that's one project I'm taking. And that's what all these threads are, except I have two more bags of those threads because maybe I won't have the right color. I have to take everything. I'm taking, this is a uh, applique project that I s haven't started, but I put together. Um, let's see, can you see that picture? It's, um, it's a flower one, I think. I forget where it came from, but um, that's what I'm going to work on to do applique. So if I get tired of embroidering this applique. And then I have a new wool project. This is a snowflake project. So I'm excited to start this one. Let's see if I can get you enough light to see it. So there are 12 different snowflakes. This gal who, it's a free pattern, this gal, Kathy Schmitz did. I'll put a link down below. Um, so I, I pre-cut all the circles and I just have to do the little bit of embroidery uh, while I'm away. And she put it on a table runner, but I think I'm going to do a wall hanging with it. I won't do a table runner. And then my last go-to for traveling is Hexies because I'm always making Hexies. I like Hexies, so I'm always making them. And I have a couple of projects where these have to get sewn onto the back. So I did the prep work of putting the blocks together. But then I have a gazillion more hexes I could always do. This is my big bag of hexes that uh, throughout the year, if I'm going to the doctor's office or something, I always have this in a to-go bag so I have something to do while I'm waiting. And then this, this is not a project. That's all my projects that are going. Hopefully it's enough to last me six weeks. And in Connecticut, the uh, masks are mandatory. So I made these to go to Robin's. I have Halloween. I have fall. Look at the turkey. I have turkeys. And I have Christmas ones. I've been liking these 3D masks. And that's what I, I made because I like them the best for me. If you wear glasses, you don't get that um, fogging and there's no wire in it that you don't need it. Um, but my kids really like this one. This is my video. Um, of the the over the head mask that you pull up my kids like this the best so i made a bunch of these of course they're not wearing glasses so you know to each their own that's it have a nice thanksgiving and i'll be back in florida hopefully early december bye